Shalom and welcome to our 21st annual Feast of Tabernacles. This is part 29 of Preparing for Rulership. You can't have it two ways now. You have to have it one way or the other. To be around Yahweh eternally, you must obey His laws. If you don't study His laws, you can't be approved by Him because you won't know what to do. So my part of my job is to teach you the law. And ever since I have come to my people, I come teaching the law. From the beginning, I come teaching the law. Why the law of Yahweh? Psalm 19.7 Why the law of Yahweh? Read. The law of the Lord Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. Read the next verse. The statutes of the Lord Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. Read the next verse. The fear of the Lord Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord Yahweh are true and righteous all together. The law of Yahweh. Why? All we need do is ask a few questions. What about the laws of man? Are they perfect or imperfect? In America, do we live by the laws of man or the laws of God? We live by the laws of man. Man's law is imperfect. Does it make us happy or unhappy? What scripture? Proverbs 29.2. What's wrong with the world? We'll see shortly. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. Let's see what's wrong with the whole world. Wars, poverty, misery, suffering, death, tears, hunger, greed, lust, superstition, fear, ignorance. Read. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The only ones who are getting off with a perverted sense of pleasure on the earth today are the wicked. For until my coming, nobody on earth was declaring the name Yahweh which means the law of Yahweh has been suffering from inertia. The law exists as gravity exists, but it suffered from inertia. Dormant, inactive, quiet, no movement, until my coming, the name Yahweh ineffably held. Held to be ineffable until my coming. No one openly proclaimed the name Yahweh. No one spoke the name Yahweh. They had substitute names like Jehovah, Lord, Titus, God, Titus. Almighty titles, Elohim, Adoniah, anything but his name. They would say, he's known by many names, they would call all the names but Yahweh.
So the very fact of my coming, proclaiming the name Yahweh, makes me unique. One of a kind. And uh, my coming in the name Yahweh signals the wicked that they ain't got long to stay here. And uh, there's an extremely minute minority of people on the earth that looks like you and me. When they hear the name Yahweh, it stirred something in their subconscious mind that seemed to have activated their genes and chromosomes. Say, so Yahweh? Yahweh. There's something about that name. Touches my soul. I want to know more about it. What did you say? Black God. This is too good to be true. We know that the righteous have not been in authority. So nobody on earth is rejoicing. There are people doing wicked and evil and Satan has caused wickedness to be fair seeming, seemingly okay. But everybody is complaining about wicked rulership. You're living in the land of the free. You're free to do wicked. You are free to get AIDS. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you are free to get syphilis and gonorrhea and herpes, super gonorrhea. You're free to get all of that. You're free to get drunk and OD on cocaine and heroin and become a crack addict. You're free to rob and steal and be a criminal and then go before the courts of the land and enter into the criminal justice system. That means where all criminals get justice. They're turned loose while the victims are going through hell. Victims have no justice. Victims have no protection. But the criminals are read their rights. While the victims don't know whether they have rights or not. If the victim tries to protect himself, he ends up going to jail while the criminal that inflicted the wrong is free. Because America and the world of the wicked is a criminal justice system. Injustice for the righteous, justice for the wicked. And it causes the righteous people of the earth to mourn. So the people of the earth mourning in Psalm 29 2 means the wicked are ruling. Now when the people of the earth get tired of mourning, there's a faint voice crying in the wilderness of North America, crying Yahweh. After a while, that name is going to become more powerful than it is among the people mentality. See, the name's already powerful, as it's going to get, but it can become powerful in your mind when you receive the name Yahweh. We live in an imperfect world. Why the law of Yahweh? Bring about perfection. And those who say they believe in the Son hmm, have to go with Matthew 5, 48. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are not a truth teller. That's being nice to you. In other words, you're a lying, hypocrite, vermin, serpent, viper. <laughs> to be bluntly truthful. Matthew 5, 48. Read. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Uh, if you go to church, And you claim you believe in church. See what your preacher is supposed to be telling you? To be what? Perfect. 
See, it's written in red in, in most books. This means that the Son of God said, you must be perfect. Now we go back to Psalm 19.7, which tells you how to be perfect. It takes what? The law. One thing Yahweh issues that is perfect is the law. In order for you to be perfect, you got to be righteous. And if you're righteous, you'll come into rulership. And the people of the earth will rejoice. Praise God. Isn't that a blessing? Hallelujah. The statutes of Yahweh are right in verse 8. That means if you don't go along with the statutes of Yahweh, then you are what? Wrong. Wrong. The statutes of Yahweh are right. So if the world does not go along with the statutes of Yahweh, then what's wrong with the world? The world is what? Now here comes a man all by himself into a wrong world. Yahweh ben Yahweh. Think about it. Nobody was talking about Yahweh when I came. Which means the world was all wrong. That means it took a lot of courage on my part. Having come from the world, having been a part of the world, having been groomed and taught and educated by the world, which means whatever the world taught, that's what I learned. What do you think I learned? I learned what the world learned, which was what? Wicked. I was not taught righteousness. I was taught what you taught. How to do wrong. I was taught how to do wrong. I was taught if you want to be successful, you have to learn how to be skillful at wrongdoing. So were you. I know what you were taught because I was taught the same thing. I was taught how to be inferior. I was taught how to look down on myself. I was taught how not to believe in myself. I was taught to believe in white folks as being superior. I was taught to look down when white folks come around, step off the sidewalk and let them go by. I was taught you can't go where white folks go. I was taught you go to the back door. I was taught go to the colored restroom and the colored side and the colored room and the colored bus station and the colored theater. I was taught that. I was taught you only work for white folks and you accept whatever they paid you and be grateful and scratch where you don't itch, dance when you got out the writing, talk with a smile when you're upset with the world. I was taught to be overworked and underpaid. I was taught to pray and watch for when the eagle would fly. And he only flew on Friday. I was taught to go to party on the weekend. And then go to church on Sunday. And bow down on your knees and pray. And say, Lord, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Because I've been too wrong all weekend long. Oh, Lord, have mercy on my soul. 
all day long. My head is hurting this morning because I got a hangover. Didn't think I could get here, but I'm here law bowed down on business knees once more and again before the empty fountain seeking to get a pitcher of water for my headache. Oh, Lord. I don't know what you were talking. That's what I was talking. I had the blues on Monday. Tuesday, I was still feeling kind of bad and went. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Taught you gamble and take a chance. be a fool, taught and trained to be a tool. Please turn to side two. They told me if I, if I got an education, I could get a better job. Hmm? They said if you get a better education, you can get a better job. But nobody taught me to be the owner and producer of industry. I was taught, look for a job. And I was told you had to be 10 times better than white folks if you want to make it. I was taught that if you want to make it, you have to lie. You have to learn to tell little white lies. If the lie was big, it must have been black. Because all the lies that white folks told was blue. And they were white lies. Well, your kind of lies, my, our kind of lies was something else. See, white folks told little white lies so they were never funny. Niggas learn to lie so they can stay up all night and you be laughing on the corner all night long. <laughs> they went on to become comedians. Big lying. Black lying. <laughs> white lies, little white lies were used to trick you out of your property. Take your house. Like I saw in the Miami Times today, an ad for a new home, two and three bedrooms, $327 a month. And in the big ad, it's a big, all oh, big full ad, but in the left hand, bottom part of the ad, it's, it's a bunch of little writing that you can't see with normal eyes. So I took my glasses. Today. It said cheaper than renting, $327 a month, $2,800 down for deposit, for a down payment and closing costs. And in this little bitty section, boy, where you could definitely couldn't read it unless you had double eyes. I took out my double eyes. <laughs> and I read that it was 8% to increase another 7.25% over the next five years and that it is a graduated mortgage payment and interest payment, which means that it will be a total of 15.25% by five years. And as a graduated mortgage, it means you start off at $327 a month. And then it says if this will also uh, be plus a tax insurance and mortgage insurance to be added to your monthly payment. So when I took out my calculator, that came to over $600 a month for 25 years. And the house cost $48,000. And when I added that all up for 25 years, it was only $175,000, which means you paid for the house four times.
Now see, uh, ignorant, that's designed for ignorant, gullible niggas who are going to be cursing and want to try to kill somebody in five years when they know double. And then they're going to try to sell. But it's all right there in little bitty fine print. You know how many of us have bad eyes, and we, not, we don't like to try to read nothing anyway. We saw 327 and thought we were going to get over. And it only has a, a carpet, refrigerator, stove, and air conditioning. Can you imagine how one of those matchboxes is going to look in 25 years? Can you imagine how many times you got to buy a lot more? and cut grass if you keep it looking good? Hmm? You know how tired you'll be cutting grass by the time you're 60? You buy this about 30? <laughs> Can you imagine how many doors you're going to buy and how many rules you're going to have to put back on that bad boy and how many times you're going to have to rebuild the house from the termites? It won't even be a house in 25 years behind termites in Florida. <laughs> Tricks. Tricks. Glory to Yahweh. Glory to Yahweh. Yahweh is wonderful. Why the law of Yahweh? Because you'll have perfection. The statutes of Yahweh will make everything right and cause your heart to rejoice. Every commandment of Yahweh is pure. And that's the only way you're going to see Yahweh. Just keep his commandments. And have a what? Pure heart? What? Matthew 5 8. Read. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yahweh. I am Yahweh then Yahweh. But you just said that you taught the same wrong we were taught. Right? Absolutely correct. Now knowing I was taught what you taught, then you must explain to me how did I come to know Yahweh? How did I come to know this name? You were not taught the name, therefore, I was not taught the name either. Of all of us in America, 50 million strong, none of us were taught the name Yahweh. Then it means I'm a miracle. Just teaching you the name Yahweh makes me a miracle. So then I transcend what I was taught. That makes me a transcendentalist. You were unable to transcend what you were taught, except through me. Now you're in the state of ascendancy, and you're in a state of transcendentalism from the transcendentalist. I'm the overcoming one. The overcomer. I ate what you ate. Most of what you ate anyway. Now some of that stuff you ate I really couldn't get down with. <laughs> like snails. As cargo. You can name it anything you want, but I didn't eat snails. Those slick snotty oysters. Never could make it. Crabs were too ugly for me. I don't care how you bought them. I don't care how deep the barrel and how hot the fire. Crabs were too ugly for me to eat. <laughs> but I came through that too. 
I saw a crowd trying to get out that barrel. <laughs> they were using all those other crabs to get on and try to get out too. They didn't like that hot water. They said niggas were like the crabs in a barrel. I understand why, man. I didn't know what that meant when I was young. I thought crabs in a barrel was just when everybody was trying to crawl on top of them. You was in hot water, you try to get out too. I really understood it when I saw crabs being cooked in a barrel, open fire. Anybody ever see that? Woo, look at this. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, I went through that too. But what makes me unique is I overcame all of that somehow. I was born in the same darkness that you were born in. Isaiah 42, 19. Read. Who is blind but my servant, or death as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord Yahweh's servant? That's me. <clears throat> I was more blind than you. And yet, I am become perfect. This concludes part 29 of Preparing for Rulership.